Uh, hello viewers who are watching us on, B, on uh, BTN TV. Uh, I'm Wes Gabosco. Yes, I'm again back as usual. I take you through science and uh, I hope this time we are going to go on. Uh, remember this is a wisdom center uh, located in Vugisera, Karumuna. Uh, as the head teacher wisdom center, I also handle science, primary six. And uh, this time we are going to uh, start. Last time uh, we had uh, some kind of activities we did with you and uh, we are back at this time. So please uh, stay tuned. Uh, today, as actually we are going on, I'm going to handle uh, the topic that we looked at last time, but uh, we had actually the first uh, session. Last time, uh, in our topic about animals, we looked at uh, classifying animals and uh, we went ahead grouping animals into yes many uh, into uh, main groups of animals or main classes of animals which are the vertebrates and invertebrates uh, we went ahead looking at uh, the vertebrate side where we saw uh, the other two groups of vertebrates which are the cold-blooded animal and warm-blooded animals from there we went ahead uh, looking at uh, the, may, the the five subgroups of vertebrates yes uh, we handled at least one of the component, which are the mammals. And at this time, we are going to go ahead looking at other four subgroups remaining. And uh, for the moment, we want to switch on uh, with the reptiles. Uh, reptiles, just like other animals, they are found in our localities, in the way we stay, in our environment. So uh, this is another kind of uh, subgroup that we want to look at this time. The second group this time. Reptiles, uh, majorly, as, as I said earlier, they are many in our environment. Yes, uh, reptiles, if we are to define, we can simply look at them as animals whose bodies are covered with dry scales. Now, some can even say that their bodies are covered with dry scaly scales. Yes, uh, we had last time a variety of uh, animals. And uh, for this time, we want just to pick out uh, at least one component and look at uh, its features. Because we said last time, when you're grouping animals, we majorly look at uh, the, their features, characteristics, internal or external. Those can help you properly to classify animals. So for the, this case, we want to look at uh, the features of this animal. Uh, this is a reptile, which is a, a crocodile. Yes, you can see. We said if you want to look at these features, Check which are external and internal. Uh, for the external features, which can help us to group reptiles, looking at this example, which has a, a crocodile, look at uh, its skin. We say the reptiles, their bodies are covered with dry scales. Yes, look at the scales. The scales are dry. You see, this uh, that can classify, can, or can help us to classify reptiles. Okay, so any animal you can find having such kind of scales, dry scales, is a reptile. Uh, we shall go ahead and look at examples, but we said last time, before uh, picking out the examples, you need to know what are the features, what are the characteristics which help you to know really that it's a reptile. Uh, yes, we can still move ahead and check on other features. Look at, uh, yes, look at its limbs. We have the forelimbs, the hind limbs. Okay, uh, these ones, reptiles majorly, they have short limbs. If you look at them, these short limbs or their limbs can be modified into fins for swimming. That's why they are able to stay in water and on land. Yes, so uh, this point pushes us to the second point. Yes, so where I say reptiles majorly uh, stay, okay, both on land and in water. In water, they will be able to swim using their limbs which are modified, these limbs are modified into fins. Yes, uh, if you are to move ahead, yes, we can uh, go ahead and look at the internal features, uh, like uh, look at the way they breathe, okay? Reptiles breathe through lungs. Yes, uh, last time we looked at this and we said, uh, how are they able to breathe through lungs actually when they're in water? Because uh, when you look at most animals, which are, you know, which are normal or common known to stay or live in water like fish, uh, their, their gills have adaptations that enable them uh, to breathe in water, uh, which we shall look, ahead, look at ahead. Then for those also, this way they, they can probably live in water. I told last time, or we discussed last time, that uh, these reptiles, when in water, 
still they breathe through lungs, but uh, what happens that uh, when they in water they have taken enough oxygen, if you want more oxygen, then uh, they, they come, they raise up their head, their nostrils, and to pick or to get more oxygen. Uh, okay, and then now once they get more oxygen, they go back, they close the nostrils, and then use that oxygen they have taken in. Uh, then uh, we can check on other internal features here. We we'll look at the way these animals uh, actually look at the, 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 the way they, they produce. Reptiles lay eggs. Okay? Yes. Uh, we, are, we are, yes. Okay? As I say, reptiles lay, lay eggs. If you check here, this point here. Uh, these animals which lay eggs are called oviparous animals. Yes, or just oviparous. So we'll be always asked or we'll be finding such terms of brush animals. Uh, remember last time we looked at uh, the mammals, and so for mammals are viviparous animals, meaning they give birth their young ones alive. For reptiles, they are oviparous animals. Yes, so uh, this also can help us to clarify reptiles. Remember, we shall look at similarities between different groups of animals. Like if you go to fish, you go to amphibians, you find that this will be a similarity between these animals of uh, laying eggs. Uh, still, uh, reptiles are called bird animals, which we can call it ectothermic, yes, or pyoclothermic. Yes, ectothermic animals, the animals whose temperatures do not change according to the environment. Um, yes, this also we shall look at as a similarity between different animals as we go ahead. And uh, we talked about the uh, kind of fertilization, which is internal fertilization. Um, uh, for this one, simply we say that uh, animals which have internal fertilization, you find that uh, uh, the, the sperms and the ova, they fuse, join inside the body. That's in the oviduct. Yes. Uh, you will see as we go ahead to animals, for animals which have external fertilization. We shall see how it's carried out. Then uh, we can still move ahead and say that uh, uh, for reptiles do not care for their young ones. Majorly, if you look at uh, crocodiles, snakes, geckos, and name it. For them, once uh, they are, uh, the young ones are hatch, okay, uh, the eggs hatch into young ones, we find they just leave them there and then they begin caring for themselves, which is not a case with the mammals, um, which take care of the young ones. Uh, we say they live both in land and, on land and in water. Yes, that's covered. And then also we say they have short limbs. Yes, I hope you've look, you can see. This is a, actually a variety of features which can help us to identify purely uh, animals that are reptiles. Yes, we can now move ahead and uh, then check on these examples of reptiles. You have been mentioning this. This can actually move. First, we can see the lizard, tortoise, alligators. Chameleon, a snake, gecko, uh, ferryman, okay? Yes, but remember to always check on the features. Yes, uh, so having looked at the uh, reptiles, we can move ahead and look at the third a subgroup of vertebrates, which is now the amphibians. Amphibians also have their special features, which can help us to identify them. But before that, we can simply say that amphibians are vertebrates that spend their early life in water and adult life on land. Yes, so if you check about amphibians, these animals, majorly when they are actually at early age, which are now called the tadipoles, they spend that life in water. As they grow, yes, uh, turning into uh, frogs, uh, toads, salamander, newts, then they grow or move on to land. Uh, yes, so we can check Look at this. So we have also picked out at least one of the examples. Last time, remember, we looked at a variety of them of amphibians. Yes, but now we can still check on this. Uh, when uh, you want still to understand, actually, animals, as we said earlier, look at external features and internal features, which in other words mean external characteristics and internal characteristics. Those are external, uh, they are outside, which we can typically see with our eyes. Yes? When we look at uh, this animal here, we find out this is uh, uh, a frog, okay? Yes, look at it. You can see uh, for frogs, majorly, uh, if you look at uh, their skins, look at the skin. 
Uh, these are not skills. Some people get confused. Uh, for amphibians, have no skills. Otherwise, they have uh, moist, soft skins. Yes? Yes. Uh, actually, this even enables them to breathe through the skin. So uh, amphibians, we can shall look at and say that uh, their skin, they have moist skins. Yes. Uh, when you look at uh, uh, their limbs, okay, they also have short limbs. This can be smart if you compare to the uh, to the reptiles, they go to limbs, their limbs are short. This can be modified into fins for swimming. Um, and then uh, we can uh, go to the internal features or characteristics of amphibians. Majorly, if you look at uh, internal features, we check on the way they breathe. Amphibians uh, breathe through uh, skin and lungs. Actually, this is very common. Uh, grade six, please, you need to take care of this. You need to take note of this. You'll be asked uh, the breathing modes of amphibians. Yeah, it's uh, skin and then lungs. For amphibians, actually, we say uh, these skins for uh, lungs of breathing. When they're in water, remember we said majorly uh, in, they can stay in water and land. When they're in water, they use their skins for breathing. And on land, they're able to use their lungs for breathing. Uh, yes, then we can go ahead and check on uh, another feature of amphibians. Uh, amphibians, they are viparous animals, just like reptiles and birds. So here, this one we shall, as we move ahead, please take note of this. This becomes uh, uh, a similarity between uh, these animals, reptiles, amphibians, and, and, and fish. They are all oviparous, meaning they lay eggs. Yes, uh, we can uh, look at another point. If you check, uh, okay, can maybe move ahead and then we see. Yes, we've seen this. Uh huh. Good, we have seen this. Uh, yes, we see the young ones are called adipose. Uh, yes, the off breathing, handle this, or handle ready. Then uh, we also looked at the young ones breathe. Yes, good. Uh, you looked at this, look at the young ones breathe through gills. Young, actually, this uh, a young, amphi or young amphibians are uh, simply called tadipoles. They breathe through gills. As they grow, then they develop uh, the lungs and the, and the skin as features of uh, or organs, modes for breathing. Then uh, uh, we say they lay eggs. Then let us look at uh, the kind of uh, fertilization which we can find within amphibians. Amphibians undergo internal fertilization. But somebody can wonder, how does this take place? Uh, it is actually quite interesting. Yes, for an amphibian, uh, okay, uh, for amphibians, okay, you find, yeah, this is just a kind of sketching, yes, yeah. For amphibians, majorly, yes, you'll find that uh, uh, when the female amphibian uh, which is time for laying eggs, it makes sound. And uh, for this, the male amphibian, yes, will mount, will mount on it, yes. Uh, yes. Will mount on it, yes. And for this, <laughs> yeah, will mount on it, yes. As, uh, as the female, Amphibian lays eggs. Please get me clearly properly here. Because we are looking at uh, the kind of internal fertilization. How does it take place within uh, uh, the amphibians? Yes. You find for amphibian, I said as, uh, it, the female one lay eggs, lays eggs in water. Yes. The male one, the male amphibian will be shedding sperms on the eggs. Do you see this? So meaning the sperms, yes. The, the fusing of the sperm and the ova will take place outside. That is external fertilization. So it's quite interesting, yes, because uh, sperms now will be just moved by water. That's why they lay this in water. Um, that is called external fertilization. This is commonly in fish and amphibians. So please, this will come as a, a, a similarity within uh, the amphibians and fish. External fertilization. External fertilization. Yes. Yeah, remember, we move, as we go on, we shall look at the types of fertilization. This is one external fertilization. Majorly, look at uh, uh, fish and amphibians. 
they undergo egg sac fertilization. When you go to mammals, uh, check on uh, birds, reptiles, those three subgroups, they undergo internal fertilization, which takes place inside the body. Yes, within the oviduct. Uh, we can uh, move ahead and uh, look at uh, the next feature. Amphibians are cold blooded. Yes, this has been coming, and uh, we are looking again this, which is also called ectothermic animals. Amphibians, their temperatures do not, their temperatures change their own environment. This is called ectothermic animals or the poikilothermic. Yes, uh, for here, this word I can write here, we can, uh, the word, uh, we can say ectothermic, ectothermic, thermic. We can also have another term. You'll be finding different terms. Ectothermic, we can call them, yes, pure clothermic. Pure clothermic. Ectothermic. Yes, this can also, yes, be called uh, cold blooded. Cold blooded. Yes. Cold blooded animals. So once you find uh, such terms, yes, no, we are meaning ectothermic, uh, uh, the, the poikilothermic, called by the animals, these are simply mean animals whose temperatures uh, can change according to the environment. Yes, so uh, we can uh, move ahead, look at examples, which we, uh, we talked about. Uh, within the amphibians, you can see examples. We have the toad have the frog, uh, we have the, the newts, the salamander. Yes, okay, let me take you through here a variety of examples and then we see. Because uh, sometimes when we say, when we look at these animals, one says, mm, how will new, how does a new, newt look like? A uh, uh, frog, a tardy pulse. So we can check on these examples and see the really animals we're talking about. Yes, uh -huh. these are the animals I've been saying, I'm talking about. Check here. Uh, this is a frog. Yes. Uh, the one that we had the last time. Okay. This side which we looked at as the external fertilization. You can see. Uh, and then uh, from there we have toad. Majorly frog and the toad are very common animals. Uh, and then now uh, we can go on. I uh, can go ahead looking at the salamander. Salamander is also an amphibian. And then the newt. So these ones are commonly actually asty. So P6 members have to be careful as look at these animals because they have got uh, some kind of special features, similarities with other animals. So they are commonly asked. Uh, so we are, it's very important to understand uh, uh, these animals, majorly as we talked about the features. Yeah, just a recap, or taking you back a brief as we leave the amphibians. Check here, compare these animals. Look at the skin here. This skin has no scales. Just the moist skin, okay? Look at the toad here. Yes, no scales, no, yes, look at the newt. Different from, from, uh, from a lizard, which has got dry scales. Check on a salamander here, no scales, yes. So they have got soft skins. That's a very important feature we shouldn't forget. Uh, and as we go to the breathing modes, you will see, it shall bring out this, okay? Uh, yes, we can now move ahead. Uh, we can go ahead and look at uh, uh, nurse, another group of animals, subgroup of vertebrates. Yes, so uh, this is another subgroup which you want to handle. That's fish. Yeah, fish is also another interesting subgroup of, of vertebrates. Yeah, majorly for fish, uh, we say that fish spend uh, their life in water. Once exposed out of water, then uh, that will be out of that will be the end of their kind of living. So they spend their life in water. That can be a, one of the features which you can use to uh, describe them. Yes, yeah. Before you go to look at the features or the characteristics, let us make a look at uh, the features. Okay, here, typically without uh, uh, just mentioning, but look at this animal. This is one of the fish. The vertebrate of fish which you have, we can, uh, it's a tilapia fish. Yeah, look at its features outside, external characteristics. 
Look at the scales. These scales are different from the scales of a crocodile. Okay? Here. Yeah. Yes. So these ones, you can see. Uh, they are all, the body of a fish is covered with scales. Uh, then uh, when you check uh, the other features, these are fins. Okay? We shall look as we go ahead and look at the parts of a fish. We we'll see these all fins have different names. You can have the, 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 the pectoral fin here. Yes, the, the pelvic fin, the ventral fin. You'll see them. The dorsal fin, or sorry, the tail fin, or the caudal, uh, caudal fin. We we'll check up here. We shall see the dorsal fin. Yes, we'll come on that. So these are all called fins, okay? Which enable the fish to swim in the water. Ah, yes, remember. As we go ahead, we also look at uh, the way uh, animals move. So, swimming will be a um, uh, locomotion mode or movement for animals like fish. Yes, I uh, still look at uh, uh, other features. Yes, maybe we can go ahead and look at those which are internal. Yes, you will see uh, that for the fish, I've got gills. I will say here this is the paculum or the gill cover. So, within inside there are gills. Fish use gills for breathing, yes? Uh, so we, shall, we can uh, look at this now. So we say the airboards are covered with scales, yes, as we've seen the diagram there. And they also said fish live in water. Typically, very easy to understand. And uh, I hope this time it's really moving on well as we go on. We go on. Uh, they are cold blooded, which is called ectothermic. And last time we said we can, we have to three terms, meaning ectothermic. Number one, ectothermic as the first term. Look at cold blooded, and then uh, the poichlorothermic. This means the same term. Their temperatures can change according to the environment. Uh, fish still uh, look at them. We can say they lay eggs. This animal which lay eggs, they are viparous. And remember, uh, just as we discussed about uh, the amphibians, we found that time. Uh, their fertilization takes place outside. Yes. So as they lay eggs, these eggs here are fertilized outside the body. That's called external fertilization. And then now uh, we can go ahead and look at uh, the way they breathe. Yes, we handle this. They, use through, they breathe through gills. Yes. Oh, yes. All fish use gills for breathing. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So we can now move ahead and look at, uh, yes, you're going to have an activity. Uh, yeah, we can uh, have the uh, as you can have uh, prayer activity. Yes, if you have a friend near you, or just uh, uh, you alone watching alone. Yes, you can just you can uh, check draw draw fish and name its parts. Yes, we looked at this in primary four. It's uh, something that will be carrying on. Eh? So look at this. We shall come back in the revision time. So uh, yes, I will give you. We shall look at this, I'll give you time and then uh, we discuss about this. But I want to see you doing this. Yes, please try out, draw the fish and then the parts. Actually, some of you have been talking about them when I was discussing about the fish up. Um, the, uh, so this can push us to the next uh, subgroup of animals. Remember, we are looking at kind of revision because this is majorly handled in primary four. When you look at uh, animals, I told last time when we, we began looking at uh, this topic, our unit of animals, we said that uh, in primary four, we look at majorly classifying animals. Then when you come to primary five, uh, we look at, uh, 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 that's where you say about chicken farming, okay, which is also called the poultry keeping. Then uh, leaving that, going to primary six, we just heard about goat and cattle keeping. So you can see uh, most of the work is handled in primary four. That's why we are trying to move through this. So please, yes, your P4 work can enable you to actually make a recap of what you learned last time and then name the parts of a fish. Remember, parts of the fish, look at the functions, uh, look at uh, the nutrients we get from the fish. Majorly, it's very important to know that whereby fish are good for proteins. Yes, uh, that's also part that we handled the last time. Yes. So as we move ahead, we can now uh, check uh, on the birds. Yes, this is now the, uh, the fifth subgroup of amphibians. So, sorry, of, of vertebrates. Vertebrates are 
just like a, a subgroup here, which are the birds. Birds are animals whose bodies are covered with the feathers. When you check the birds, I think uh, we can uh, look at a variety of birds here and check on this common feature in birds. Uh, yes, you can see. Yeah, check the barn owl, uh, the, uh, the wood duck, the penguin, pout, ostrich, the roaster, uh, roaster, the, the herring gull, the vulture, pigeon, very many, all these birds. Check, if you check what's very common in birds, you see? Yeah, birds, you see the animals whose bodies are covered with feathers. You see eight bird here, yes, has got feathers. Just moving on, you can see all these. So this can help us really to define or to, cat to categorize bird. birds. It's a very distinguishing feature. That's why we can uh, describe them using that feature of, 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 of feathers. Uh, yes, as actually as we go on, we shall even see different uh, uh, similarities between birds and other animals, and then this distinguish them. Yes. So let us now uh, look at uh, specific features uh, of these animals. Uh, having described the birds as animals with the feathers, feathers on their bodies, we can look, at, look out at this kind of bird here. Uh, this is an eagle, you can see. Yes, uh, majorly eagles fly and go far to the sky. You can see it's just taken up from the sky. Yes. Uh, for birds, just first look at this major center here. Before you go to the features there, let us first look at it. Look at the physical features. So the, the physical parts, uh, the physical, typically, using your eyes, you can see. Uh, yes, uh, look at this its body, all covered with feathers, you can see. Yeah. So this is very important. Uh, look at its wings, okay, which enable it for, uh, to fly. Uh, then uh, look at the toes. The toes have got scales. Okay. Look at the beak. <laughs> the beak used to use to pick food. Yes. I uh, also have internal features which I'm going to look at. But uh, we can now move. Okay. So characteristics of birds, which are also called the features of birds. Yes. Their bodies are covered with feathers. You can see that's seen there. And then. Uh, we we'll talk about uh, the wings. Look at the wings, which are used for flight or flying. Yeah, they can easily fly because of the wings. And then uh, they have scales on their legs. Yes, as we earlier said, check on the bus around. If you have a bird like a hen, you have uh, uh, ducks. Check, check on their toes, their feet. You, their feet, you will see that they are covered with, with the scales. Uh, birds have hollow bones. Uh, this means majorly, this helps uh, birds to have light bodies for, for flight. Actually, they always ask that, uh, which features enable birds to fly. Just check about here. Yes, like one here. They have hollow bones. This makes their bones light for flight. Uh, when we say hollow bones, uh, majorly their bones, you find if you break, they are, they are not like for those of cows and what. For them, they are, they are hollow. Um, they, 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 are, they, are, they are not fully packed with the bone marrow, so they are hollow. This enables them to have uh, light bodies for flight. Uh, they use beaks for feeding, yes, as we look here, you can see. Uh, it's not called mouth, but well, this is the beak, it's called a beak uh, in birds. Then uh, we can go on and say, uh, birds lay eggs, they lay eggs, this is uh, termed as oviparous. Uh, I hope you can see these terms are now becoming common. We are getting used to these terms oviparous and then viparous. So oviparous animals, as I said, the animals that uh, lay eggs. So birds lay eggs. Please, as we go for uh, different activities, you'll be finding such questions about uh, similarities between different animals. Birds, amphibians, and reptiles, they are all oviparous. Uh, Yes, they undergo internal fertilization. Yeah, so this, uh, we said last time, we're looking at uh, amphibians, uh, we the we undergo external, uh, and, those, and those of fish. But look at birds, mammals, 
and reptiles, they undergo internal fertilization. The uh, sperms and, the, and, the, and over, they are fused or joined, or they join within the oviduct, that's inside the body. So this makes that to be internal fertilization, different from amphibians and fish. Uh, they are warm-blooded, which is called endothermic, okay, or homeothermic. Yes, uh, when you talk about warm-blooded animals, we said they are, they are warm-blooded, they can be called endothermic, endothermic, okay? We can still call this homothermic, okay? Yes, homothermic. Uh, this can also be called simply a common term, warm-blooded, warm-blooded animals. Okay, so once, uh, uh, once you look at uh, uh, hot blooded animals, remember they are the homothermic, they are the endothermic animals. So these terms, I hope they are becoming very common to us. So when you find them, it won't be a challenge. Uh, yes, uh, let us uh, uh, move ahead. Uh, uh, classifying birds. Remember, this we have this in the primal form. Yes. Uh, so, with types of birds, with the, we want to look at types of birds with examples in each. So, for this, it does have this as individual activity. Yes, please. We are going to, yes, uh, we're going to be sharing, discussing, okay, after this. But I try also get, get, your, get your book, get your paper, do something, check on different types of birds. Uh, it is, I hope, yeah, it is uh, uh, not all that. Uh, uh, an issue because we have looked at this in the primal four. Check the types of birds, uh, and then uh, look at uh, examples in each. Yes, with this you'll be finding exam types like uh, swimming birds, look at uh, the flightless birds, look at uh, uh, you'll be finding types like uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the uh, check, check, check the, 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 the carnivorous birds, okay? Uh, the praying bird, which are called the praying birds. These are all types of birds. The patching birds, okay, climbing birds. So remember, this is primary for work. We handle that. So please check, find, use your time, and then uh, uh, check on the types of birds with examples. And remember, in each type, with the features. Uh, okay, and then also uh, get this, draw an egg and name all the parts. Yes. Don't forget the functions of each part. And uh, as we come back here for more revision, shall look at this. And then lastly, yes, don't forget to look at the digestive system of a bird or a fowl and name all the parts with, their, uh, with the, their functions. So you can see we have uh, more individual activities. Check on yourself. And then as we come back, yes, uh, we shall find time and discuss this have this uh, and get the fine findings that you've been looking at. Yes, uh, so uh, for now, we want to end this time, we want to end here, and then uh, we, we shall come back uh, to look at uh, um, uh, different activities, yes, about animals. Uh, before we go to the invertebrates, I'll come back here and we link up, we check on the activity that I've given you. So please, use your time Yes, try out those. You have different sources. We learned about I. We learned ICT. You can use search engine. Uh, yeah, that's Google, which is very common. Two different kind of search engine you can use and then find. Yes, try out and find out, find out those find get those findings. Yes, uh, for now, yes, we won't end here. But uh, remember, always tune in. Uh, stay watching BTN TV because every day we, are pro we provide you or we come to you with different lessons. We want uh, to see that at least uh, uh, within this time or as even we come back to school at least uh, where we, when we are able to uh, actually face or to handle different kind of, of, of um, activities. Yes, please. Uh, remember, I told you this worker is from, right from primary, if you find it's helping us, that's why a primary six member, please remember, 
check on your books for primary four, primary five, or primary six, and don't forget right from P ones because for PLA majorly uh, is set from all lower primary P one up to primary six. So please check out uh, your books. We use your time in this kind of relation. Revise your books, please. I want to say that uh, uh, this time, yes, our people from Wisdom Center uh, and the rest in the whole country. Yes, those who are watching us. Let me hope we are going to have actually uh, most time and uh, benefit in this. I wish you the best. Stay tuned. Thank you.